The Breakaway Civilization. Recent movies about the breakaway civilization utilizing off-world technology. I suspect that there is a breakaway civilization out there that has advanced technology and have had access to it for quite some time and it's suppressed from the rest of us. In some cases, the breakaway civilization, I guess I live in it being that I live in the United States and the standard of living seems to be much higher here than elsewhere. However, I think there is even yet a greater, more advanced civilization somewhere on Earth possibly hidden from the rest of us using technology 50 to 100 years advanced into the future. I believe this technology could set mankind free, fully automate society, reduce death, reduce or increase the lifespan, make everyone's lives greater, and is kept suppressed. So we have to keep working the 40-hour work week and remain occupied. Artificial scarcity, the idea that abundance is not abundant. So let us begin and take a look at these films. The first film we will look at is Elysium. Elysium has a breakaway civilization that lives off-world and has a nice, clean, perfect environment with advanced technology. The rest of the masses live on Earth and are policed by robots and do not have access to the tech. In fact, uh, everybody on Earth are employees, and what they create is used by the people on Elysium. So essentially, Earth is a labor colony. The movie was made by the director of District 9 and Chappie. His name is Neil Blomkamp. I suspect he got some of these ideas by living near Johannesburg and seeing, I guess there was probably a breakaway, what, what seemed like a breakaway civilization there dividing the classes. These movies could be a metaphor or an analogy for the first world versus the third world, but living in the first world, I still believe there is a breakaway civilization even greater than what we consider the first world. In fact, we may call it the first world in order to conceal the existence of the breakaway civilization. And in Elysium, some people were sick and they needed medical treatment. The medical treatment existed in abundance on Elysium, uh, but not on Earth, as well as a bunch of other technology that could liberate all the Earthlings. Jodie Foster's character, while her position seems mean, mean-spirited, if you th- the way the movie plays out is exactly how she had expected it to. Once the Earthlings got a foot onto Elysium, they then exhausted all of the supplies and pretty much just destroyed the nice, pristine life that they had set up for them, the civilized life in Elysium. So both sides are right and both sides are wrong. The thoughts that Jodie Foster had and the outcome of what happened reminded me of watching the newer version of The Time Machine starring Guy Pierce and the 7-Up guy, Orlando Jones. Uh, when Guy Pierce goes to the, to the future, like 800,000 years in the future, he discovers that the human race is divided into what he thought was only two races, but really it was three. You have the, the masses, which they were like 80 to 90 percent, and they were just regular people. And then you had this like super race that weren't that intelligent, but they were very aggressive, and they hunted the 80 to 90 percent. But then Guy Pierce discovers that there's this 1% of these super intelligent beings. And when he meets them, and it might be like a future version of himself, the guy says to him, you know, if, if I didn't control, oh, he controlled everybody through, the, through his minds. Like him and all the other 1% were able to control everybody's minds. And he said, if I didn't control them, they would exhaust all of the supplies in a matter of months. So I don't know if it was a justification for enslaving everybody's minds or if it was an actual byproduct. The argument could be, can't you civilize these people? Isn't there enough to go around? I don't know the answer, but I like to believe in abundance and I like to believe there's enough to go around. And if things are unlimited, even if people are massive consumers, what does it matter? The next film we will cover is Jupiter Ascending. And in Jupiter Ascending, Earth is owned by human looking people that aren't from Earth. They have advanced technology that Earth humans don't have. 
They harvest humans for an elixir that gives them drastically extended lifespans. Earth is a colony of which the humans are livestock. The film was directed by the Wachowskis, and they are the directors of The Matrix. They also had technology where they could just spray the spray upon any wound, and the wound would automatically heal itself. And they had the ability to create cities within hours. So even if a city was destroyed and demolished, they could reconstruct it within a short period of time. This film is an excellent example of the breakaway civilization utilizing off-world technology, using suppressed energy. And they even explain it, that it's suppressed and that it's not offered to the people of Earth. And a total side note, the, the movie was panned by critics. They said that the movie was awful. And they gave it really bad reviews. Yet when I went to see it, the theater was packed with people. But when the movie ended, they all said, Oh, this movie was garbage. It was trash. And I almost wonder if they went to the movie just to experience what the critics said. I was, throughout the whole movie, I was like, like jumping for joy. I'm like, I can't believe all this information is in this movie. And so I don't know why people thought this movie was so bad. It's no worse than any other movie that's out there. But that, and this is why I say there's a message in the movies. I don't go for a plot. I suppose if people went for a plot, they wouldn't like it. But I don't know why. The plot wasn't that bad. And the special effects were incredible. It had everything a movie should have in it. Um, so I don't know what they were expecting other than to basically parrot what they've been told by the critics to think. And it's almost like, you know, the Wachowskis, they put out information out there that the they or the establishment don't want you to know so it's like they wanted to control everybody's mind saying oh nothing to see here this is a bad crappy movie terrible plot terrible acting but i'll say this myla kunis did look pretty bored with some of the some of the lines that she was delivering but that's kind of her style anyway uh but who cares about the plot who cares about the storyline i'm in it for the information the disclosure and this movie absolutely disclosed the breakaway civilization, the technology they have, that it's suppressed from you, that you don't have it, that you work, and they live. <laughs> so Jupiter Sending to me is great. The Wachowskis are great directors, great writers. Um, although Matrix 3 was kind of kind of iffy, but Matrix 1 and 2 were fantastic. I still haven't seen Cloud Atlas, but uh, Jupiter Sending is great. Don't buy what the critics say. There's so much information packed into this. Our next breakaway film is Tomorrowland. And it's a breakaway civilization that has taken all of the top engineers out of the general population and brought them to engineer a perfect utopia. The movie covers suppressed technology and the breakaway civilization and how our minds are controlled. Uh, there's like a, a disclosure scene where Dr. House says they used to use hope and now they use fear to uh, motivate us. But instead of... Uh, they thought the fear would get us to build a better planet, but instead all we did was sit around waiting for someone to come save us. And they were pretty disappointed. So the Breakaway Civilization observes Earth and then takes out the engineers. I think the movie was directed by Brad Bird, and I think he turned down Star Wars to direct Tomorrowland, and I really commend him for that. This movie was fantastic. It was incredible that Disney made this movie and uh, I actually got to see a sneak preview version of it in Epcot in this um, theater where you'd feel the wind and the heat. And it was like a theater that really worked on your senses. When I saw the, tra when I saw the 10 minute preview that they provided us, I was like, man, this is a movie about the breakaway civilization. I can't believe Disney made this movie. The movie is so over the head of the general population. So most people thought this movie was weak, but man, it's like a recruitment film in a good way and it reveals so much that i'm astonished that it was made but like i said it's it's way over the majority of people's heads but if you get a chance definitely see tomorrowland with this context in mind it's incredible they even have an ode to nikola tesla in the film and it says that him edison and a few other great minds designed the eiffel tower as a rocket so if anything could tempt you to go see the movie, go see that to see the secret room with the statue of Nikola Tesla in the Eiffel Tower. All right, this next one is Atlas Shrugged 3, Who is John Galt? Some may think I'm stretching it on this, but in Atlas Shrugged 3, where John Galt takes everybody to John Galt's Gulch, Midas Mulligan's uh, location, 
is a breakaway civilization by definition. And they were removed. Uh, John Galt removed all of the producers, a.k.a. the men of the mind, and brought them to Galt's Gulch, Midas Mulligan's place. And we could see a recurring theme between Tomorrowland and Atlas Shrugged 3, who was John Galt, in that in Tomorrowland, it was the engineers that were removed from society. And in Atlas Shrugged 3, it's the men of the mind. Well, pretty much the men of the mind are the engineers. So this, this recurring theme is in those two. And in the, in the book 1984, in the subsection called The Theory and Practice of Oligarchical Collect- Collectivism, it says that they will remove all of the greatest minds and all of the greatest engineers from society and put them on weapons projects. So that because if they were left in society, the engineers would engineer society to be great, to manufacture abundance, and to automate everything so that people wouldn't have to work. And if people weren't occupied and had to work all the time, they then would see who's controlling everything. So they remove all of the engineers and put them on weapons projects, and the weapons will be used for warfare. And the warfare isn't necessarily necessarily there to kill people, but the warfare is there to destroy the manufactured goods, and that is to destroy the surplus so that everybody has to continue working. So... Yeah, again, it's to keep people working to prevent abundance, to manufacture artificial scarcity. But Atlas Shrug 3 isn't doing that. It's just showing they removed the men of the mind from society to create a little utopia based on their values of the free market. And when the looters fully destroyed their society, they would go reclaim it. It's a great movie. I enjoy Atlas Shrugged. It's it's a transformative book. It's considered one of the most influential books in America. And uh, a lot of people hate it because they think it's about capitalism gone wild. But it's really about not letting people guilt you out of your creations. Or guilt you out of your success. Guilt you out of your achievements. Make you feel bad for being excellent. The next movie is In Time. And that's a breakaway civilization enjoys their world divided with barriers to entry, controlled by the high price of tolls. The price of the tolls exceeds anything the general population could afford. The currency is time. And there's a scene where they received a bunch of extra time from a wealthy person who wanted to die. And after they got all that time, since they shared it amongst each other, massive inflation occurred by the breakaway civilization imposing the massive inflation on the general population and that was to destroy the purchasing power of their money and this is to prevent them from getting too comfortable and to having any free time because if they had free time they could then think and if they could think they could figure out who's pulling the strings this year saw the release of movies that weren't quite about a breakaway civilization but they were about controlled environments and that was maze runner one and two the giver Divergent and the sequel, as well as The Hunger Games 1 through 4. Uh, I just wanted to make mention of those films. They were interesting. Uh, they kind of fell short of expectations, although The Giver had a pretty big uh, twist there. Uh, I just want to make mention that these films do exist and they're worth checking out based on controlled environments, conditioned society, conditioned um, uh, societal classes, and the like. The term breakaway civilization, I didn't coin it. It was coined by Richard Dolan, and it's also made popular by Catherine Austin Fitz. They're friends, Catherine Austin Fitz and Richard Dolan. Um, you really should look up Catherine Austin Fitz speeches or Richard Dolan speeches. They're, they're both fantastic. Catherine Austin Fitz is absolutely incredible, especially her life story. And Richard Dolan is a, a great historian for ufology, but he has a, a great twist on it and... You can learn about the breakaway civilization, how it's even possible from them. So really, I, I implore you to investigate Catherine Austin Fitz and Richard Dolan. I'm just wondering if any of you saw The Last Starfighter as a kid. That's where I first think I became aware of the breakaway civilization, and I've been waiting for them to find me and take me to space and uh, let me join their Starfleet Academy. Look how similar The Last Starfighter cover in Tomorrowland, the ship and the building in the background look. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video if you're subscribed. 
And if you have any movies, titles about the breakaway civilization, please post them in the comments below so I could check them out.